Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Thursday, February 1st, 2007, and I've got the S&P 500 on the screen right now. We're looking at a 10-minute chart of the spiders, and the market, the S&P that is, was up once again, adding to yesterday's gains as the early short sellers are finding that it doesn't pay to uh, sell short a market that they think is up too much or a market that uh, looks a little bit extended. We're gonna, if, if you're interested in selling short, wait for at least this red and blue moving average to start turning uh, to crisscross, and we want these longer-term moving averages to flatten out at a minimum and then see a break of support. Selling short into strength right here has zero odds. There is just not zero odds, but very low probability of success. Um, looking at the daily time frame, again, we see here that we, what we got was a bounce off the 50-day moving average. That 50-day moving average is advancing, so we consider this market innocent till proven guilty. Uh, we were looking at maybe a false breakout here, but they fa it was a reversal of a reversal, and now the short sellers are finding that uh, they're once again on the wrong side of this bull market. And it, it is a bull market indeed because it keeps hitting new highs. If you're s selling short the market, you're wrong. The market isn't wrong. You're early, and you know being early in a, on a short sale or you know, on a long position can be very costly. Wait for evidence from the market. Wait for the market to tell you that the path of least resistance is lower before trying to pick a top. I've said it over and over again that picking tops and bottoms is the hardest job on Wall Street. I have never met anyone who can do it with any success, uh, with any consistency at least. The, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, were actually down a nickel today. So I think that was d probably dragged lower by Google. But, the, you know, again, this market is in the middle of a range where the moving averages are crisscrossing. Cri moving averages that cross back and forth like this represent indecision. Remember the old phrase, when in doubt, stay out. Cash is a position in here. If you're trading the NASDAQ 100 type stocks, then you ought to be trading them on shorter time frames. There is no advantage to looking for a trend in here. This is a trendless market, which is what those moving averages indicate in here. So we've got a trendless NASDAQ. We've got a breakaway bull market in the S&P 500. And the support that we were looking at in the NASDAQ 100 did hold today. So that's going to continue to be an important area because it has been tested and has acted as support so far. This picture is looking a little bit more bullish, though, because we have all these moving averages heading higher. And again, that five-day moving average is advancing. So on a short-term time frame, I think we give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers and look for a move up towards about 44.50. But... It comes within the context of an overall neutral market. So be quick to grab your profits uh, instead of waiting for those objectives to be obtained. If you sit, if, in other words, if, you're, if you get long and it, this market starts to move in your favor, be quicker to take the profits than waiting for the target to be obtained if the market starts showing any signs of weakness. Looking at a five-minute time frame, we can see a little bit more clarity here. Where that support came in today was almost precisely at these prior high levels. So once again, the old phrase of resistance, once broken, tends to act as support. And here we see it. So this 4390 level is going to be important going forward. Um, in very short term, you can see that this resistance is acting as support near $40 a share. So hopefully tomorrow what we can see is a higher high, and then we can start to see this market uh, push higher again on the 10-minute uh, time frame. But again, it comes within the context of an overall neutral market. The mid caps continue to show uh, why they are the market leaders here with all the momentum. And this, this group, again, what we've been looking for is a price target. It, again, if we take the recent range, which is basically 145 uh, and a half up to 150 and a half, or about five points. If we add five points to that breakout point of 150 and a half, that gives us a, an upward objective of 155.50. So that's what our uh, official upside objective is going to be. It doesn't mean that you should have bought the breakout and put your sell order in at 155.50 and then go on vacation because what we want to do is that's our objective, but it doesn't mean the market's going to comply. What we want to look at is the pattern of higher highs and higher lows on a shorter term time frame and manage that position by saying, I'm going to keep raising my stop up above these higher lows because on the short-term trend, again, the definition of an uptrend is obviously higher highs and higher lows. So if it breaks and makes a lower low, 
Well, the definition of that uptrend no longer exists, so why would you want to still be long the big caps? But for now, the breakout continues to add to these all-time highs in the mid caps and trying to fade this strength or sell short you're fighting big institutional investors with billions of dollars so just don't do it the uh, semiconductors let's take a look at them semiconductors we don't need to spend much time on these because again we're just in the middle of a range bound market here almost smack in the middle of, of, of this range bound market but we've got a declining 50-day moving average. We've got the 10 and the 20, both below that 50-day moving average. We're hanging near this 200-day moving average as well. Basically, the semiconductors are a neutral market. There's really no advantage to trading them in here. So enough said about them. Let's take a look at the stocks we've been involved in. We got long uh, Sonic Solution yesterday above $18.20. I'd suggested raising your stop to break even. So save the loss in there. Should have been stopped out at break even. Autodesk today, what we were looking for was a pullback, first to $43.35. We got that early on. We got a pullback to about $43.32. And then once that pullback occurred, I said we wanted to buy in strength above $43.50. Let's look at the one-minute time frame. You can see that 43, uh, that pullback right in there should have been purchased right around this area right here at $43.50. So once you're in the stock, the stop was going to be at $43.17. I think you can raise that stop now to just underneath the mid-afternoon low. So let's put the stop in Autodesk at $43.92. That way, if we do get stopped out, it's with a gain, and we've, uh, we've got a good, uh, good start on that trade. RFMD, this is RF Micro Devices, and the, uh, the idea was to buy this stock above 780 today. It did do that early on. It didn't hold on to those gains. But it didn't stop us out yet either. So the stop was to be at $7.65. Let's leave the stop there for now. Hopefully this thing can get going. Um, this is a company that did report earnings. They reported better than expected earnings. It was a good response. There's a big short position, nice revenue increase, and a lot of the things I don't usually talk about. But I'm, I'm long some of this stock because I think there's a good reason for it fundamentally, and technically it still acts good. Same story with FII. This was another one that was better than expected earnings right over here. And the idea today was to buy this stock above uh, $35.50. So that occurred early on. And you can see the stock closed right at that $35.50 level. Our stop was at $35.12. What I'd say is let's raise that stop now to $35.38. So now there's just about 12 cents of risk in this position. If you look at the daily and weekly charts, it looks like it ought to continue higher, but just in case, let's uh, raise that stop to 35.38. Netflix was our one short of the day, and in a bull market, it was our one loss of the day as well. What we were looking for in here was a uh, short below 22.70. That occurred actually right on the open. So if you got involved there, you know that it immediately ran to our stop of 23.05 and stopped us out with a loss of 35 cents.